Hello AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here for video number seven in our series about the chain rule. There's a total of nine videos if you're wondering, so we're getting very close to the end. It's certainly one of the longer series of videos that we have for AP Calculus, and it's probably related to the fact that the chain rule is an extremely important part of differential calculus, and it's something that we want to make sure that you understand thoroughly um, before you really move on into later parts of the course. And it's really not too difficult if you really set your mind to it and work hard. So we're going to take a look in this video at using the chain rule to find the derivative of exponential functions of base e. So you probably remember your good friend e to the x. Well, we're now going to take a look at e to the powers of more than just x. So if you recall, the derivative of e to the x, probably one of the easiest derivative formulas in all of the world, is just e to the x. And you can check out one of my earlier videos where we kind of go through some of the intricacies of why that particular derivative is the way that it is. So it just seems natural that if you take the derivative of e to the u, something more than just that x, you're going to have to use the chain rule, and it's just going to result in e to the u times the derivative of whatever that u was. So for our example 7, we're going to look at two very short uh, examples, and we see that in part a, find this derivative of the function y equal e to the 2x squared minus 3x power. Well, if we take the derivative of y, and you can always write dy dx, or you could write y prime, you would start with e to that power. Nothing changes. We have that same exponent. And then we would simply multiply by the derivative of that exponent. Now this derivative is going to consist of two terms, so I strongly encourage you to place this result in parentheses. Hey, even if it only contained one term, there's nothing wrong with putting this in parentheses. It's going to make it look a little bit more like it's being multiplied. I even put the dot there to emphasize. The derivative inside is going to be 6x squared minus 2. And you're essentially done. You don't have to do anything else with this. Now if you're wondering how could this possibly appear as a multiple choice, well there's a chance that perhaps a 2 could be factored out of that 6x squared minus 2 and it might uh, come in first before the e. Sometimes we like to let that e with the power reside at the very end so we don't question what's in the exponent and what's not in the exponent. But of course, the first answer would be perfectly acceptable on any free response. Taking a look at part b for this problem, y equal e to the 1 over x power. What I might suggest with this first is you rewrite the 1 over x as you traditionally would, and that would be as x to the negative 1 power. We've always done that leading up to this particular video, so we're not going to stop now. Now we have a much better uh, environment in which to take this derivative. So the derivative of e raised to this x to the negative 1 power is just going to stay e raised to the x to the negative 1. Nothing changes. That is the e to the u part right here. But we finish off by multiplying by the derivative of that x to the negative 1, which of course is negative 1 times x to the negative 2 when we use the power rule. That derivative is correct. Not very well simplified, of course, but we can take care of that just simply by working a little bit of algebra magic here. Maybe that e raised to the x to the negative 1 can be rewritten back as e to the 1 over x. It really wouldn't matter. Um, however, this x to the negative 2 is going to plop down to the denominator, and he would become x squared. Now don't forget, we still have not accounted for this negative sign. When you have a fraction that you know is negative, you can put the negative sign anywhere. You can put it in the denominator, you can put it up with the numerator, you could even put it out in front, and as long as it's there one time, you know that you have a negative answer. So that pretty much takes care of this video. I told you it was going to be fairly short. The next video is going to talk about a couple of new derivative formulas that aren't very common in AP Calculus, uh, but yet they're most likely a part of a nice college calculus one curriculum. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time with those as well. So stick around for video eight in this series, and we thank you for watching as always.